This VizCast will look at using Gauss's law applied to a problem using a charged wire. Pause the video now to read carefully through the question. Having read through the question you can see there's quite a lot of detail here describing that there is a wire of a certain length that has a certain amount of charge placed on it uniformly. And in addition there is some uh, non-conducting cylinder uh, with a particular length and a particular radius that is basically centered on that wire with the wire running along the axis and the question is asking you to find the electric flux through that cylinder and the electric field at the surface of the cylinder. So begin by interpreting the question. What is this question asking us? It's asking us to think about how we can find an electric field from a charge distribution. Importantly, we'll need to make note that there is cylindrical symmetry here, with it's basically a cardboard tube that we're being asked about, centered on this wire. And although there's maybe more than one way we could think about finding this electric field, the first part where it asks for the flux gives us a clue that this may be a very useful application of Gauss's law for an electric field. Now let's move on to the development of our solution here and of course a drawing will help so let's imagine here is our wire and um, we're told it's seven meters long and it has a certain amount of charge upon it and near the middle of the wire or basically at the middle of the wire we have a cylinder and here's my rather bad drawing of my cardboard tube that has the wire going through this along the axis, along the center there. And we're told this has a length of two centimeters. Remember our wire here is seven meters, so my diagram's not terribly well proportioned. Maybe I can consider my wire going off to the right and left here. And a radius here of this tube of 10 centimeters. And in terms of the electric field, this, this wire is, is charged. You can think about it having a whole bunch of charges somehow placed along like that, maybe much more closely spaced. And each of those point charges will of course be producing an electric field that points out in all directions. But that's a vector field that's pointing in all directions. So the charge right next to it will be putting out something quite similar in all directions. And by the symmetry of all these charges you can see lined up along here, all of the components of the electric field that point along the wire's length will cancel out. You can see this one this little charge just here might have, a, have an electric field pointing off to the right and next to it there'll be a charge here that at the same location will have some electric field pointing off to the left and those two components will cancel. Um, this of course will break down if we're at the end of the wire because at the end of the wire there's no charges off to the right for example in this, at this end to, to cancel the component of the field pointing along the direction of the wire. So at the ends of the wire we could expect maybe the symmetry won't be quite uh, strong enough for us to understand the nature of the field but as long as we're some distance away from the end of the wire and that's what this this statement here reasonable approximations is making us think about we are on a seven meter long wire but we're at the middle of the wire and we're only talking about distances on the order of centimeters here so we can really make the reasonable approximation that the field will not be governed by the end effects of the wire the field will be governed by what's essentially a uniform linear distribution of charge and so our field that we expect will actually be at right angles to the wire a radial field coming out from the wire at all locations uh, it might kind of point in different directions of course but it will always be coming out radially uh, so in terms of our, our little cylindrical tube here we'll have a field that will come out and if our tube is a, has the wire at its axis the field will at all points be at right angles to the surface here it'll be parallel with the normal to the surface. That's what we expect our electric field to be doing. So clearly the symmetry here is quite important and as we've already mentioned if we're going to use Gauss's law here that tells us something about the relationship between the electric flux through a surface. Electric flux through a surface is the integral of E dot dA around some closed surface uh, and Gauss's law for the electric field tells us that will be equal to the enclosed charge divided by the permittivity of free space epsilon naught. And we'll just make a note here that the total charge 
on our wire here, we're told in the question is 2 microcoulombs. Now to the evaluate stage, you can actually start to calculate some things here. The first thing it's asking for is the flux through this cylinder here. And this cylinder is basically forming our Gaussian surface. It's a, it's a quite useful surface to use because as we've just discussed, the electric field will be pointing at right angles to this curved cylindrical surface and indeed there will be no electric field poking out through the ends of the cylinder. As far as we know this, this cardboard cylinder here doesn't have ends on it but if it did have circular end caps on this tube there would still be no field poking out through them due to the symmetry of the problem. So if we're looking for the electric flux through the surface Gauss's law tells us it will simply be the enclosed charge divided by epsilon naught. What's going to be the enclosed charge in this problem here? Well the enclosed charge from this surface will simply be the fraction of the total charge on the wire given by the fractional length that this cylinder uh, encloses. So for us that will be the, the length of this little cylinder divided by the total length of the wire multiplied by the total charge that the wire has. So we can see in our case here, if you're putting some numbers in, the length of our cylinder here is 2 centimetres, let's put that in metres, 0 0.02 metres, divided by the total length of the wire, which we're told is 7 metres, uh, multiplied by the total charge, which is 2 microcoulombs, so I'll put everything in here, in SI units, that's the enclosed charge right there, and divide that by epsilon naught, which in SI units here is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and that gives us a number of 646. And we should probably double check the units of this number that we have here. Let's see, we had here a, a length, 2 centimetres divided by a length, 7 metres, so those two lengths actually cancel out. This charge here is in coulombs, and this uh, uh, permittivity of free space at the bottom here. You might have to double check and look that up, but it, in SI units it's actually in units of Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared. And if I do some cancellation there, we can see this unit comes out to be Newton meter squared per Coulomb, which is the unit of electric flux for us. So that's the units, and that's answered the first part of our question. Let's just move up a little here for the second part of our solution, we were asked to find the electric field at the surface of the cylinder, and we've pretty much got all we need because we know Gauss's law tells us about the electric field um, at our Gaussian surface, which is the cylinder in this case, and we've just calculated what the electric flux uh, through that surface is. So we want to find now the integral of E dot dA, and we're looking for, for that electric field there. And for our curved surface of our, of our Gaussian surface here, we can see that the electric field is indeed parallel to the normal to the surface by the symmetry at hand. And so E dot dA dot product will simply become the electric field magnitude times uh, the element of area normal to the surface. So that's kind of easy. And if you cared about it for the, for the circular ends of these, you can see that the electric field will in fact be perpendicular. Okay, the, the normal to the surface on these circular ends points out in that direction there, and that's at right angles to the direction of the electric field, and so for those E dot dA, that dot product there, will simply equal zero. So we can say now that our electric flux will be equal to this, this integral at the top here is simply going to be the electric field which is constant because it's at a constant distance. Our, our cylinder here has a, a surface that stays the same distance from the wire, so we can take that constant out the front of our integral, the A, over our curved surface, and that's a fairly easy thing to calculate. That's the electric field E, the thing we're looking for. What is the curved, the integral of this curved surface here? I should keep that circle in there. It's a, it's a closed surface. I'm including the end caps, but they give me zero. So the curved surface itself is just going to be the curved surface of a cylinder, which is the circumference of the circle here, 2 pi r, times the height or the length of the cylinder L. And that, from Gauss's law, is going to equal the electric flux. So the electric field 
that I'm looking for will simply be the electric flux divided by 2 pi uh, L and these are now all quantities that I know. I know the electric flux is 646 in SI units divided by 2 times pi times the radius which is 10 centimeters or 0.1 of a meter times the length of this which is 2 centimeters or 0 0.02 and when I do that calculation I get a number of 51.4 times 10 to the power of 3 and I should just double check these units again this flux remember was in Newton meter squared per coulomb and what have I got on the bottom line of this I've got 2 pi which is dimensionless I've got a radius times a length that's meters times meters that's meters squared so my meter squares actually cancel and I'm left with newtons per coulomb which is what an electric field should in fact be in newtons per coulomb it's a force per unit charge force in newtons per charge coulombs so that's my my answer there 51 0.4 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb is the electric field strength at the surface of that cylinder. Just to finish, let's do a quick assessment. The first thing that we would often check is the units to make sure that we haven't done anything silly with rearranging uh, formula and ended up with a quantity that has the wrong units or the wrong dimensions. In fact, we've been checking that as we've gone along. We did end up with an electric field in the units that we expected. Uh, namely newtons per coulomb, so that's good. Um, another check you could think about doing here is that there's actually a formula um, for a field from a charged wire. Uh, you can find that in the textbook. Uh, it actually uses Gauss's law to derive it, of course, and it tells us that the electric field some distance away from a, a uniformly charged wire is given by lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r, where r is the distance we are away from the charged wire and lambda here is the linear charge density how many coulombs per meter the wire has upon it and if you put the numbers in and I'll leave that as an exercise for you put the numbers from this problem in if you do use that formula uh, you actually get exactly the quantity that we got by our slightly more explicit calculation here applying Coulomb's law to this particular problem with the assumptions that our cylinder was far enough away from the ends of the wire that we were essentially approximating the wire to be infinitely long, ignoring those end effects.